Welcome back guys to a brand new Let's Play and yes this one's gonna be back on the Game Boy Advance. It is Metroid 4. Ooh yes. One of my favorite all-time favorite Game Boy Advance games. Developed by the same crew who developed Super Metroid, which is pretty awesome, and released in 2002. Oh, and looky here, we have Samus cruising around the galaxy, having a good old time flying, a, flying with the uh, the big shitty log vehicle. That's what the abbreviation stands for. When all of a sudden she decided to follow her stupid GPS, like the woman she is. That's heading her right into the asteroid belt, and well, she she didn't have the sense to stop. Uh, fortunately, uh, ooh. Ooh, yeah. Keynote people, never let a woman drive. Anywho, with that sexist joke aside, let's start Metroid Fusion, the final installment in the Metroid franchise. Chronologically, that is. <clears throat> Anywho, let us start over on this file. I'd been assigned to watch over biological research team. So I once again found myself on the surface of SR388. It was there that I was attacked by a life form I had. Never accounted before. It was only later that I learned the identity of my attacker, the parasitic organism we know as X, and no, not Mega Man X. I was returning to the station when disaster struck. Seizure! Seizure! <laughs> The ship's emergency systems were automatically ejected, the escape pod before impact. Biological vessel recovered it and transported me to the Galactic Federation headquarters. However, during the journey, the X multiplied within me, corrupting large areas of my power suit. It then came to light that the organic components of my power suit had become so integrated with my system that it could not be removed while I was unconscious. Large portions of my suit had to be surgically removed, dramatically altering my physical appearance. However, the X in my central nervous system were too embedded to be removed safely. I, I was given a minimal chance of survival. Then, someone found a cure. They proposed using a Metroid cell to make an anti-X vaccine. It seems that the Federation had managed to preserve a cell culture from the the last Metroid on SR38. The serum was prepared and injected without delay. Well, I wonder why they have that extra vaccine, eh? That extra serum of the Metroid, Metroid DNA. Yeah, I don't know. Somewhat odd. As for me, one life ended, yet I survived, reborn. As some th something different. Pondering this fact, I realize I owe the Metroid hatchling my life twice over. We'll be soon arriving at the BSL research station. I must prepare for docking. The ship's computer has notified me of our approach to the Biological Space Labs or BSL research station. During my surgery, the research team sent the last batch of creatures we captured there, as well as the infected pieces of my power suit. After regaining consciousness, I learned that an unexplained explosion rocked the station. For some reason, this awoke nameless fear in my heart, and now I'm being sent there to investigate. My mission on the BSL station will be overseen by a new ship's computer. Following the commands of this blunt, computerized commander is something I have to bear, as it was a condition of taking the ship. For someone who dislikes taking orders, this is the second time I found myself having to do so. 
It makes me recall my other commander. Well, at least we kept the ship. <laughs> I, I say it's worth it. It's a pretty nice spanking ship. Especially considering we don't have to jump on top of it every time we want to exit it. And we have a landing. Huzzah. There's been an explosion in the quarantine bay. And this is where I'm not going to read the text because a lot of it's just chitter chatter. <laughs> Honestly, I'm not going to read every little text bubble. Because some, some of the stuff is, well, I mean, it is somewhat important, but I'm just not going to read it. Just sorry if you're disappointed. Anyway, we are starting off Metroid Fusion, one of my favorite games for the GBA, like I explained before. Oh, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, but like I said, it was released in 2003 in Japan and 2002 in the US. Mostly because of the popularity of the Metroid uh, franchise is more popular here in the US than Japan. The quarantine by Ebe is up ahead. Now we have to destroy these parasites in this quarantine bear where there's been a ex mysterious explosion. Oh, let's see what we find, shall we? Also, I sort of like the new isolated, uh, well, not new, but the isolated, uh, space station as, as, uh, setting that we're placed in. It's very nice, indeed. This is unfortunate news. The specimens brought back the field team were infected by X parasites. The X can mimic its prey. Any specimen hosted it before the explosion and security stand gladness X parasites invade and, and consume the prey and then they replicate them. So yeah, this this stuff is not to be fooled with. Plus if you check out the top, that's a pretty nice 3D animation I have to say. Not 3D, but it's a nice 2D drawing that looks 3D. It looks really 3D. And somehow we can uh, absorb X parasites, but more importantly, absorb them to refill missiles. I don't know how you do that by absorbing stuff, but hey, it's a video game. And for some reason, this this computer has no confidence in us. Ooh, you have 10% chance of surviving. Dude, I've been through two planets already. I think I can handle this. Jeez. It's not like Zebus and Faze were hard to destroy at all. And plus, I destroyed a dimension as well. So I think I got this covered, man. And we have to talk to you again because you forcefully locked the rooms. Yeah, there's no way to skip all this text and stuff if you're doing like a rerun of the game and stuff. Anywho, the cool thing is, the Federation this time is actually not being lazy like they were in the previous, well, like, side-scrolling Metroids, and are actually assisting us in some form of way by giving us upgrades through data rooms. That computer reminds me of a gruff Confederation commander I served under named Adam Malkovich. He called me Lady on missions. From anybody else, it would have sounded sarcastic, but Adam made it sound dignified. I know some respect was so irony, I named the computer after him. Well, isn't that sweet? Yep, and just to let you people know, at least the young crowd, I guess you could say, this takes after takes after Metroid Other M, and I fluked there, and now the computer thinks I'm an idiot because the data room's right beside it. Oh, nice. It probably doesn't think highly of me. No wonder it's saying like, oh, you have 10% battle chance. Well, I I'm going to easily show you I have like 110. <laughs> Seriously. And this isn't good. Electrical interface has knocked out the uh, power on the main deck. It looks like we can't get down by the elevator. So, we had to make way to this huge bio sign. With using our missiles. Because, well, what else are we going to use? Considering your regular shots d doesn't really clear away of any uh, obstacles. Well, it does, but 
We only have that beam and then the missile, so... Yeah. Do the math. Like I said, you can absorb stuff. And something that's actually sort of dark about this game. You see those... Those purple creatures that are, like, slouching around and stuff? Well, those are actually the scientists. Were the scientists, that is. The X are now manipulating them and controlling them. Well, replicating them and stuff. Which is so uh, dark, I guess you could say. Even though in Met Super Metroid, there was a group of scientists that uh, pretty much were, were pretty much killed by Ridley and the gang in the beginning. Anywho, talk about the uh, the actual the wall jump in this game has actually been nerfed compared to Super Metroid. Now you can't you can't Mega Man exit. Pretty much, the jump forces you to the left far enough where you can't keep jumping on the right wall. Which sort of stinks. And you can't really see the brakes anymore. Right? Get your nostalgia boners on because guess what? We have a good old time boss from Metroid 2. Yes, this is Arachnus, and if you didn't remember him, you had to defeat him in Metroid 2 to get the Spider Ball. And he was the only. Um, boss in Metroid 2 that was not a Metroid, surprisingly. <laughs> yeah, good stuff. And the cool thing is we get the Morph Ball, which is somewhat like this, the Spring Ball, as you can say. So, it's, it's cool they keep that sort of relationship intact. Anywho, let's make our way out of this pot uh, slime hole. And head our way to the navigation room. Yes, this is very linear, and we always have to follow this navigation room. Though the cool thing is, it's the the non-linear part of this game is that you're thrown into areas where you don't know where to go, even though the navigation room is sort of telling you the general idea where to go. Samus says, "If you're the breeding environments have been evaded by X parasites." Looks like we have to head to Sector 1, which is a replication of the planet SR-3DA8. Yes, that beautiful, well, boring planet that we visited in Metroid 2. I really how, like how the game, this game, makes, makes you feel like the events of Metroid 2 weren't quite uh, useless. They actually had a significance in that the X returned. And yeah, cool stuff. And just to let you guys know, this will be a 100% run of this game. I forgot to mention that. Anyway, let's go to Sector 1. that thing we know we're screwed especially considering it has the screw attack pun intended <laughs> anywho guys I'll be, see, be seeing you guys later in part two as we take on sector one